right, good evening. Hope you're doing good and I hope you've had a great day. Um, tonight we're going to have a little time in the Word and I hope you have your Bible. Um, but before we do that, I want to just make sure we go over a couple quick things. Um, first of all, don't forget Sunday mornings. Uh, we will have Sunday mornings every Sunday, 11 a.m. online through Facebook Live and through YouTube. I uh, just want to encourage you to be a part of that time. Our students are meeting through Zoom. It is a video um, conference that we're doing. We're doing that every Wednesday at 7.30. If you need information on the codes, please uh, contact me at the church or email me at drshanenbc at att.net. Um, if you need help in any way, we want to encourage you. We want to help. 803-534-1199. Uh, Call us and let us know what we can do to encourage you during this time. I know some just need to talk to somebody. And uh, we're, we're making sure that uh, we got people here and ready and willing to help in any way we can. Um, kids time is Saturdays at 11. Uh, it's a special time for our kids and, and we're real excited about that. But just just be in prayer for that time. It's going to be very special. Uh, every, every Saturday that's on uh, my, my personal uh, Facebook page and uh, we're excited about what happens with that. Um, if you'd like to be a part of online giving, you can do that through going to our website, www nbc the number four christ.org and then you go to the giving page on the giving page you'll see a blue button click on that and follow the instructions it'll help you to get connected with us college group and, and singles group they're meeting on thursdays at seven on zoom as well and i can get you connected with those codes just message me we'll get you plugged in on june 7th i'm real excited about june 7th we have a special day coming um, many of you have asked when are we coming back well, it's not going to be coming back. Uh, it'll be different than what it's ever been before. Uh, we've all been changed through this time. And so I want to encourage you to be here June the 7th. Be watching the mail. If you haven't got it already, you will be getting some information on how we're going to make the phase one step in coming back together as a church. Uh, there'll be a couple steps to where it'll take us to get back to, to somewhat of a normal thing. Uh, but it'll be different. And so uh, be watching the mail. If you have questions on it, please don't get upset. Just, just call me and we can talk it through and, and figure out all the details. Uh, if something's not clear, we want to be very clear. And so uh, just let us know. Our deacons and I have worked real hard to uh, make that a very powerful time. So uh, please, please, please be in prayer. There's going to be two services. One will be at 930 and one will be at 1115. Um, and and um, I, we have some things that we're doing to make sure that everything's clean and safe. So uh, just watch the mail, and if you got questions, uh, we'll give some more details uh, next Sunday. will be a little bit more information. Bible study for adults is 645 on Wednesdays. Um, we will have that every Wednesday except the first Wednesday of the month, and that's when we're doing our drive-by prayer time until we can get somewhat to a normal schedule on Wednesday nights as well. So. Uh, be watching that'll be on Facebook and YouTube and we can get you plugged in it's it's about 20 uh, minutes um, and, and we want to get you connected to that time as well so uh, with that said I think that's all we got as far as information that we want to get out if you have a Bible go to Proverbs chapter 3 Proverbs chapter 3 is where we're at tonight uh, Psalms Proverbs uh, so look look at Proverbs chapter 3 uh, we're, we're looking at wisdom we've been looking at wisdom a lot this month <clears throat> and we all need some wisdom wisdom so important to where we are as a group of people we need God's wisdom uh, there's plenty of wisdom out there for other people and 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 what they think is wisdom uh, but the Lord will give us confidence that will last when we when we seek him and so tonight before we begin uh, I want us to just have a word of prayer and then we're going to jump right into his word let's pray Dear Lord, I love you, and I thank you for this day. I thank you for giving us this time together, and I thank you for who you are for every one of us. Lord, tonight as we come together and we uh, search your word and just try to become more wise and confident in who we are in you, Lord, help us to be about your work. Lord, you've given us a great responsibility to this community, this state, this nation, and this world. And I ask that you help us, Lord, because we need you. And Lord, as we go about the rest of this day, I just uh, thank you for what you've given us this morning and what you have for us the rest of this week. And Lord, I just ask that you just continue to place your hand upon us. I love you and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, we're going to look there. 
Um, Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 21 through 26. Hopefully you have a Bible. I know it's real easy during these times to, to have your mind on all kinds of other things, but I hope that you'll just take a few moments and just stop and, and take just a few moments of your time and just stop and be in the Word. And let's study together for just a few moments. Um, Proverbs chapter 3, beginning verse 21, it says, Maintain your confidence and discretion. My son, don't lose sight of them. They will be life for you and adornment for your neck. Then you will go safely on your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be pleasant. Do not fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from the snare. Now, Proverbs is a great book if you're looking for wisdom. Uh, um, so much in there, so much. I mean, you could just uh, camp out on one verse many times and just look at what it has to say. Tonight, I want us to just look at six things um, that will kind of encourage us. I've, I've labeled them all with the letter T, so they're a little bit easier to remember. Um, but six things that will help us stay confident with God's wisdom. Um, and so as you're thinking about these six things, I hope that you'll be encouraged uh, from his word. And I hope that you'll uh, just really seek after his direction and his guidance. First one is in verse 21. It says, maintain your competence and discretion. Don't lose sight of them. We have a target. And our target is God's plan for our life, his purpose for our life, his direction for our life. And when we think about that target, it helps us stay more confident when we, when we have a focus. You know, when, when we go out and we don't have a focus, it's, we're all over the place. But with, with the target of the Lord, um, we, have a, we have a plan and a purpose for our life. And we need to stay on target, stay on task as, as we're going. Uh, I heard a story of John McKay, one of the uh, coaches, NFL coaches, college coaches of the day, uh, Bear Bryant. They went duck hunting together. And uh, they were getting close to their limit of ducks as they were hunting. And uh, Bear Bryant saw one more, and he wanted to get that duck, so he shot and shot twice, and he missed. Be and uh, John McKay chuckled a little bit, and uh, Bear Bryant looked at him and said, Well, John, I want you to know you just saw a miracle. And John McKay kind of chuckled and said, What do you mean a miracle? And he said, Right there you're seeing a dead duck flying. See, he would never admit defeat. He wanted to stay on target that his purpose was still being fulfilled, but he didn't want to let John McKay know that he missed that duck. He wanted to say, hey, I, I hit him, but he's still alive. Yeah, that's a miracle there. Um, and many times when we think about things like that, uh, we, we, we think about that, that being that for our lives. And really, God's wisdom uh, really kind of takes us out of our comfort zone and takes us to a place where we look and see things from a whole different perspective than what we've seen before. Second thing we see is verse 22. It says, and they will be your life for you and adornment for your neck your story your testimony when we uh, are able to be uh, connected with God's wisdom it becomes a part of our story it's it's our testimony it's our, it's who we are uh, I like uh, the group Big Daddy Weave <coughs> excuse me and uh, they have a they have a song that said says these lines let my life be a story and let me my life speak of you um, when our life is a testimony of what Christ has done, it speaks of his wisdom and his direction for our life. And it, it ought to be a testimony. Uh, we're not, when we share our story, we're not bragging on us. We're, we ought to be talking all about what the Lord has done in our life. That's a lot of wisdom. That's a lot of direction. Uh, the second thing, or third one, is, so we have target, testimony, and now trouble. Uh, look at verse 23. It says, then you will go safely on your way and your foot will not stumble. So think of the word trouble. Uh, we can stay out of a lot of trouble if we'll follow God's wisdom. Trouble. I, I, I tell you, even, even myself, I, I can get into plenty of trouble all by myself. I don't need somebody else to get me into more trouble. Uh, but God's wisdom keeps us out of trouble. That's why we have his word. His word is there to kind of keep us on the straight and narrow. His word is, is to help us stay uh, connected with him. And when we follow his wisdom, we learn. We learn to do what is right. Uh, Bobby Lay was one who went uh, in a steel can over at Niagara Falls, a specially designed steel can. And in 1911, uh, he was able to go down there. It was very, uh, very uh, risky type thing. And, and he went down the Niagara Falls um, and he did it in this specially designed steel can and survived. 
It wasn't long after that in New Zealand that he slipped on an orange peel and fell and, and broke his uh, hip, I believe it was, and, and uh, later died from complications of falling on an orange peel. Now think about this. This guy was, you know, he, he designed this can to get down Niagara Falls to, to help him to get through all this troubling waters and, and he survived and made it through it. And, it, it, you know, it was one of those stunt things like what we see today um, um, on New Year's or different times of the year when people are walking across these tall buildings, you know, these specialized things where, where people think they're doing something great. Bobby Lay was able to overcome that, but he wasn't able to survive an orange peel. It seems quite uh, interesting to me when you think about that because really that's where we are a lot of times. We could come up with all kinds of ways and things to overcome little things in our life but, but, but it's, it, or, or big things in life, but the little things sometimes are what really gets people in trouble. And it's the little things that, that we're not uh, paying attention to God's word like what we need to. The Bible says a little yeast works through the whole bunch. A little stuff can cause you a lot of, a lot of trouble and a lot of, a lot of difficulties. I hope and pray that we could be people who will stay in the word and be people of the word and seek his wisdom in his direction. Then verse 24 talks a little bit more. It says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. And when you lie down, your sleep will be pleasant. Think about just how sometimes may, maybe you've been this way. I have before when, when my mind is racing, it's hard for me just to lay down and to, to get the rest that I need. And, and so, it, it, you know, I'll look, uh, I'll look over the clock and it'll be later and an hour later and an hour later before I know it I've been up all night long well if I stop and I and I spend time with the Lord and, and not worry about anything else just put my focus in him uh, I, I will stay I, I will stay at a place where I can much rather rest um, you know me staying up and worrying about something doesn't solve anything in fact, I really miss God's best for me because we all need to take some time and rest and we need to be at the place where that rest helps us be sharper um, and, and helps us overcome those things that we face during the day. Uh, when I lose rest, uh, I'm not the person that I need to be the next day. I, I'm, I'm not the person that I need to be uh, in giving my best and, and securing who I need to be in Christ. So time is, is very important. Take the time you need to spend in the Word and spend it with Him daily, uh, seeking His direction. Uh, you know, if, if, I, if I miss my quiet time, I could tell. If I miss my time with the Lord, and I try not to, but if I miss my time with the Lord, I'm not at a good place. I need Him daily. Um, some people might look and say, well, that's being uh, codependent. Well, you know what? I'm not codependent. I am totally dependent on what He has. And we've got to be in the word and seeking his wisdom and direction. Then look down at verse 25. It says, do not fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. Um, there are plenty of tricks in this world. And that's the next T. There are plenty of tricks that the Satan likes to throw at us. Uh, Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the full armor of God so that we can stand against the devil's schemes. Those tricks um, cause, cause us a lot of difficulty. Danger and difficulty, they, they come uh, when we, when we um, allow our confidence to be in anything but God and his wisdom. Uh, Bobby Lay is a perfect example. Uh, but there are plenty of examples of, of where we try to put our own plans and make our own thing. Even in churches, sometimes we try to do it our way, push things through. No pastor is called to be a cattle herder. Pastor is called to be a shepherd. Uh, we're not pushed to get our own agenda through a church. We're, we're, we're pushed to follow God's direction, seek his face. Um, any, any time that we do our own will, even within the church, uh, we, we need to be very careful. Um, God has a plan for all of us. And not just within the church, even within our communities. We ought to be seeking God's direction. We ought to be seeking his guidance uh, for what he has in store for us. Don't let go of his hand. Uh, Satan is going to try to trick you. He's going to try to come at you, but seek God's wisdom. It is so much better to be proactive in taking that time in the word than to be reactive in our own desires, in our own ways. So stay connected to the Lord. And then look at verse 26. It says, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. Uh, there's a trap. 
I, and every time I hear that word, uh, it's a trap. I always think of some of the things like the, the Star Wars movies. And I, I, I like some of those movies, but I like the guy when he says, it's a trap. It is a trap. It's a trap to think that we can live this world, in this world, on our own. It's a trap to think that we can do things in this world without the Lord. Life has plenty of traps. This world has plenty of traps and snares that try to take our focus away from what it needs to be. And without the Lord, we're, we're in trouble. Uh, it's a trap. Uh, what, what did Satan tell Adam and Eve in the garden? Oh, you're going to be as wise as God if you eat of this apple. That wasn't true. Um, God had a plan, and, and it was really to follow his guidance. Um, and, and Satan used trickery and words to try to twist what God had in his plan for Adam and for Eve. And so when, when you think of those things, that, that trap is so often there. there. There's a trap in this world that tries to take us away from God's wisdom. If you think you can live in this world without God, you're going to end up in trouble. If you think that you can do the things that, that he has for your life without him, you're going to end up in trouble. Um, I need the Lord every day. We need the Lord every day. We need his direction. And when we connect with the Lord's wisdom, it gives us not a self-confidence, but a God confidence, knowing that he's got it. He's got it. He's got the, all this stuff that we've gone through in the last little bit. He's got the whole world in his hand. And we are not in survival mode. Uh, we are not to the place where we're just trying to survive. We have got to be on the offensive and sharing the message of Jesus Christ with everybody who will listen. This is a powerful time to be alive. This is a time when we need to be sharing more than ever before. This is a time that we need to be in the word and, and seeking his direction. Don't, don't step back and think, oh, we, we, we've got to do this on our own. We've got to make something happen. We don't have to make anything happen. God's got it. We just got to trust the one who's getting us there. We got to be people who are seeking his wisdom and his guidance. And then you can really be confident about the things that you and I are facing. Now, when the Lord is our confident, uh, we, confidence, we will be able to stay away from the snares of this world much easier. Does that mean that you won't have trouble? Absolutely not. In this world, we're going to have plenty of trouble. But to get on the other side of that trouble, to get through that time of trouble, we have to have his wisdom and his direction. There are pastors right now, friends of mine, that are trying to figure out how to, to get uh, church back together. Um, and, and we have been stretched and pulled in so many different ways, trying to make sure that, that, um, uh, that we are not closing. The church hasn't closed. We have transitioned. We have looked for different and unique and powerful ways to share the message of Christ. Um, we have not stopped ministering to people. Uh, when the tornadoes happened, we as a church had a chance to minister to people all over this community. When graduations have happened, we have had a chance to minister to people all over this community. Um, and and not, just, not just staff and pastors and deacons. It, it, it is for all of us. Um, there, there are people in this church that have gone through surgeries and procedures, and you've had a chance to minister to people, uh, doctors and nurses. You have a chance to pray for nurses that go home and struggle with not being able to hug their kids right away because they've been exposed to different things with this, this virus that's gone on. There's some wisdom in being people of prayer. There's some wisdom in being people of the word. There, there's a confidence that we can have, not an arrogance, but a confidence that we can have knowing that, that my God is with me. I so many times have quoted the Psalms 23 where he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because he's with me. Um, now, evil is a very scary thing. Um, it doesn't always come in the form of, of uh, uh, a demon with, with horns that you can see. Sometimes it comes with very enticing things. But when we trust in the Lord and he is our confidence, we can even go through the valley of the shadow of death and not be afraid because we know that he is with us. We can go forward. And we can be confident knowing that he has got everything that we have going on in our life. So we've got to trust him with everything. Um, I love this part in verse 21. And I want to read it again because I think it's very important for us. Because uh, I think this is the key part of this whole passage. But look at verse 21. It says, maintain your confidence and discretion. My son, don't lose sight of them. 
See, our, our confidence, uh, our, our ability to do the things that we do and, and the decisions, the best decisions that we make really come from God's wisdom. Our, our, our confidence, <laughs> you may have seen different people and you say, that's not a very confident person. They're not able to do things. Um, and then you have maybe a, a, a person who is really good with their hands, but they might not be as good at reading. And you may have a person who's good at reading, a very competent reader, and, and, and they're not as good with their hands. Or, or you have somebody who's very good at speaking uh, and sharing, and they're, they might not be as good as something else. So everybody has some different things that they're very competent in. But here's the point. We all can, can place our hope and our trust and our wisdom in the Lord. If he has made you a competent speaker, then you need to use your, your abilities and your gifts and be very confident knowing that you could share the power of Jesus Christ. If he has given you the ability to use your hands, then use your hands and the wisdom that he's given you to use your hands to honor and glorify Jesus Christ. If he's given you the ability to read, then read with boldness and share and help others read so that we all will be able to share the power of Jesus Christ. With wisdom comes confidence. And that confidence comes because we're competent and very uh, determined. And, and, and this idea of discretion, um, <coughs> you've seen a, a television show that says viewer discretion. Um, th think about what you're watching. Think about what you put into your mind. Well, we need to really be thinking about putting the word into our hearts. We need to be thinking about putting how powerful this word is into our lives on a daily basis. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword, and we've got to be people in the word. We've got to be people digging deep in the word. And so my prayer for each one of us today is to uh, be people who find wisdom that really brings confidence, not wisdom of our own, but wisdom in the Lord. And I hope and pray that we can all do that. I just want to challenge you a little bit tonight. I hope this will be something of value and that, um, that uh, you'll, you'll apply it and that it'll be something that'll encourage you. On this Memorial Day weekend, we don't always have a, a Sunday evening service. And I thought that it'd be very important for us tonight to just have a little time in the Word uh, with everything else going on. It's important just to stop, be still, and know that He is God. Whether you're listening to this live uh, or whether you're listening to this um, after it's been recorded and you just had some time to stop and be still and know that He is God, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that we are people who seek the wisdom and confidence that come only from Jesus Christ and his word. Um, his word is sharper than any two-edged sword. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And we've got to be people who are seeking after the Lord. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us a few minutes this evening to be in the word. And Lord, I pray that you help us to be people of the word. And, Lord, that we'll share through the word the great and mighty things that you've done in our lives. And, Lord, today and tonight and throughout this week, I ask that you help us because we can't do it without you. We need you, Lord. We need your direction. We need your guidance. We need your wisdom because we can't do it in this life without you. So thank you for all you've done and thank you for all you're going to do. I love you and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you for giving me a few minutes this evening. Thank you for the time that you spend um, listening and and I hope that these times will really encourage you and I hope that you know that we love you and that we're praying for you and when you get down and discouraged remember we can charge on we can charge on not because of who we are but because who he is and when he lives in our life we can charge on because he's got us and he's never going to leave us and he's never going to forsake us so remember that charge on God bless you and we'll see you soon